Born in the shadows of a refinery and steel mills all around it, Marktown has been around since 1913, predating that Model A Ford right there. It is a significant part of our history because it's one of the first planned industrial towns in the history of the United States. And that itself is worth the Chicago scene, I think. I'm Tom Barnes, Chicago scene out in East Chicago, Indiana to get uh, a tour and an explanation of what this historic town is, was, and what should be for the future of it. I'm gonna talk to Paul, who's a lifelong resident, who's been here, he's the unofficial mayor of the town. Um, he's been here since 1953, the year he's born. Family, all the way back to 1917. So, that is the Chicago scene, that is Marktown, which is what you're seeing behind me now. All right, I made my way into the heart of Marktown, and I'm here with the unofficial mayor of Marktown, Paul Myers. How are you? Just fine, thank you. And it's unofficial and unindicted, which right. in this city, that's an important concept. So Marktown, what was it supposed to be? What is it for people who have never heard of it? And why is this story important? Like, let's start for the first question, though. What is it? Well, it's an industrial housing complex that was designed to meet the workers' needs back in uh, the turn of the last century, back in 1913 and that, uh, there was a huge overturn or turnover of workers. So they went to different plants in that, Westinghouse and others, and asked them, why did you keep moving? And they said, we, we need a place to, to raise a family. We, we need quality housing. We need... We don't want boarding houses. We don't want a bathroom at the end of the hall that everybody uses. Right, we want our own houses. We want running water, hot uh, furnace, everything. We don't want to all sleep in the same room. We don't want to be cooking in the same room. We, we want houses. We want something that we can be comfortable in, that we grew up in at home. And uh, they sat down and they came up with it. And part of the plan was uh, how, how dense you can have it and how it'll work and how the, a limit to how, what the density can be. All of the homes are fireproof for the most part. Uh, you can still have a fire, but the structure itself will always be there because it's solid masonry. Uh, and you, you've lived here, your family's been here, I mean, dating back to census records of the 20s. You've been here since you were born in, you say, 53, right? And you've been a lifelong resident ever since. But more importantly, this was the first of its kind in terms of industrial towns, especially in this area, right? That's right. And that was followed up later by the city of Gary, which was nothing but a steelworker town. And the city of Gary brought in a number of different architects to do different classes of housing. Uh, including senior supervisors, uh, but this was this was designed by one very important Chicago architect, Howard Van Doren Shaw, and uh, he did major projects in Chicago. And this only only four sections of the 30 some sections of this neighborhood was ever built, primarily because they got tied up with World War One. Uh, the government took over their plant. Uh, they had tons of steel that had to be re refabricated mm -hmm. to use them for what they need them for and uh, it was it was a difficult time for them. Talk about the houses, the types that you have. You, you, you mentioned the gables and the street facing gables, yard facing and the other. What, talk about the, the houses. Well there's only five floor plans in Marktown. A six room duplex, a six room single, a four room duplex, a seven room duplex and what we call a Marktown quad from the original houses. We also had houses that were built in World War II, and they were brick four squares, uh, much smaller, uh, but they met the, the needs for the World War II housing. Uh, none of the houses here have ever, tended, uh, no one's ever turned a duplex into a single, uh, which is probably best. I don't think anybody out here would need 2,000 square foot for any reason or six bedrooms, but uh, it's, a, it's a comfortable neighborhood, it's a safe neighborhood, it always has been, and you're comfortable, believe it or not, walking down the middle of the street as you saw today. Uh, no one's out to run you over. Nobody's speeding through here at 60 miles an hour. Um, and everything here was built with purpose. The way the streets are, where you can park your car up on the sidewalk, that's on purpose. That's right. You know, everything was planned. The houses were planned staggeredly to maximize the, you know, the form of the house to follow function in terms of your yard and make sure that you have everything, you know, you're taking advantage of every ounce of space. And that you weren't staring into your neighbor's back door. Right. You know, that they're always offset in that. And uh, I can remember when I grew up, all the porches were open and you could walk down the street on a summer night and talk to your neighbor sitting on the porch swing. 
And this really was a town in itself because it had a school, it had a couple schools, it had a you know a pool with uh, two pools, right? Yeah, so wading pond and then a, a regular pool with the bathhouse. Uh, we, it is a town, but it's also a town within the city of East Chicago. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did have kindergarten first and second in one building, and third, fourth, fifth, and sixth in the other building. And uh, 1930, they, the citizens or residents got together and went to the, the city and to uh, the steel mill and wanted to convert the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth two-room schoolhouse into a community house so that people that weren't laid off because of the stock market crash and what it did to general industry uh, could at least have one more meal a day supplied by the people that lived here that worked. And uh, it's a community center now. It's, it's more of a children's center and we don't have the access to it we'd like, but that's a political issue with the city. And speaking of the city and the surrounding steel mills that, I mean, this is nestled in an area surrounded by steel mills, a refinery, and the neighborhood uh, as the times do change, right? So some of the steel mills have substantially cut back on their production where there's just not as many jobs around and this neighborhood has suffered a little bit for. And that's why I'm here because I wanted to help tell the story of why it's important to remember because slowly, you know, houses are going away. We're just becoming empty plots of land, which, you know, I mean, it's your childhood and everybody else that grew up here's childhood slowly being erased. So you're doing all you can to save it by um, the website that you curate um, along for, for Marktown, right? That's right. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a difficult thing. We go back to 1974 to the National Register nomination and the final paragraph in that talks about how this could be restored, how it could authentically represent that period of time in this country. Unfortunately, the city administrations have never stepped forward to restore a home or to renovate one in a positive way that would, would bring other people in to do it. What I find amazing is that because of Indiana's tax structure, uh, I pay $300 a year for a thousand square foot solid masonry house. It's owner occupied. Uh, that tells me that the retail value right now is three three hundred dollars. Uh, the the refinery won't pay one dime more than three hundred dollars, but I'm sure that there would be other people willing to sell to somebody if they were willing to raise the price. Right, and that's what's happening. Refinery slowly buying them up to knock them down to basically essentially eliminate what is Marktown, right? Well, above and beyond that, we have a city that's doing the same thing. They bought houses on back taxes and they're going through them and, and checking for asbestos. There, there is, there's asbestos in the houses, but it's not a problem. The only asbestos that was used in a Marktown home was to wrap heater ducts and hot water pipes. That's it. Mm -hmm. And they're all closed off where you can't get to them, and those heater ducts aren't opening up and spewing asbestos out. So for people who want to be involved with this to help raise awareness to keep stop that from happening what should they do well you know if what you really want to do is uh sit down we can find some landlords out here that out of town landlords that'll sell houses buy them and and make them owner occupied because this is part of a, a national landmark right it's a, no, or a national, historical na national historic district national historic district the entire footprint that is marked absolutely town. So that's why it's important to save at the very least to help tell the story of what this area of East India, or East Chicago is, which is Western Indi Northwest Indiana here and how important it is for the city of Chicago, for the state of Indiana and just the families that it served. Well, you live in Chicago. How yeah. long did it take you to get here? Not that long, 45 minutes, 40 minutes. Oh, and we went through Whiting Park. Was it worth the trip? Absolutely, worth the trip, every bit of it. What's the website people should go to to learn more about what you do? Marktown, M-A-R-K-T-O-W-N dot org. Fantastic. I appreciate the time that you took and the ride in the uh, Model A over there. It's been a wonderful afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. And that's the story of Marktown here in East Chicago, Indiana. T B A R N A S at WGNTV.com. That's T Barnes at WGNTV.com. If you have a suggestion for the Chicago scene, until then, I'll see you later.